Hey guys, here with another uh, review. Um, this one's gonna be a Japanese splatter film, and um, yeah, that's it. Let's do it. Uh, the movie is <coughs> grotesque. It is a very graphic film. It is in very much the nature of the traditional Japanese splatter film. Very uh, minimal plot and just a lot of violence, really. The film is about a couple who is kidnapped by a surgeon, doctor, just a very, very classy gentleman, and he tortures them for sexual excitement, and that is the entire movie. The movie is an hour, it's 73 minutes long, so I would say a good portion, a good two-thirds of this film is just the two people being tortured. Um, for the most part, it is pretty gruesome, pretty intense movie, as far as the gore goes, it's fairly, it's actually really well done, it's realistic, it's not cheesy at all, it's very well done. The gore is. Um, and that's really the entire movie. It says on the front, Saw and Hostel were just appetizers, and it lives up to that name. It says grotesque is for adults, and it by all means is, if you want to say it's psychologically disturbing and something that is just absolutely gruesome and gory a lot of scenery. Um, okay, on to the movie itself, fellas. The gore and everything goes the beginning of the movie, they wake up with ball gags in their mouth, and to start the movie off, he takes a spike-looking thing, a skewer, and he has these ping-pong balls in their mouth that he's drilled holes through, like a wiffle ball almost, and he takes the spike and he puts it in one of the holes and he rams it in the guy's mouth and like impales the back of his throat or his tongue or something, and he's spitting up blood, and he um, stabs him on the side with it as well, but he puts this cream over it. And that prevents him bleeding to death. Some kind of, I guess, like nitrate or something. I'm not sure. Anyway, keeps going on. Keeps getting more and more intense. Uh, one scene, he gets a chainsaw, cuts off all their fingers, makes a necklace out of them, and puts it on the other one's neck. So he cuts off all four of the guys. All, all eight. He cuts off the, the main four up here, and he makes a necklace with a string, a string, a needle. He wraps on the girl. He then cuts off all four of the girl's fingers. She screams whenever he puts the necklace on her, so that's her, her punishment. Is he takes it, he saws off her entire arm from like here up off with the chainsaw. He then takes all four of the fingers he cut off on her one hand, uh, I guess it would be her left hand, and he makes he does the same thing, he puts it on his the guy's neck, and then he takes one of the fingers and pushes it up his nose. Is it funny, but at the same time, it is kind of humor to saw the same. It's as gruesome as that is. Um, he then takes and he asks the guy, if you can stand being tortured by me, I will not torture the girl. But before he does this, since the girl screaming and something I forgot in the last sequence where he's torturing the girl for the last little bit before he asks the guy for that, he actually takes a pair of scissors and cuts her nipples off as well. And it shows it in full detail him taking her nipple and stretching her boobs out and then clipping them off with a pair of scissors. Um, yeah, anyway. Then, on to the guy, when he starts torturing the guy, that's when it gets pretty intense. Uh, he begins the torture by nailing nails into his testicles. Um, and it shows this. It doesn't show up in a long shot type of deal, but it's close up so you just see the testicle and you see the nails going into the testicle. So, yeah. Um, the guy's one eye is really wide open, so he takes a scalpel or some kind of medical instrument, I'm not sure, and pops the guy's eye. He doesn't pop it out, he pops it, like, in the sense that he gouges it out. Um, he then cuts the guy's penis off with some kind of gigantic blade sword thing, I don't know. And he comes from the sexual excitement, and that's it. Next thing, they wake up in some kind of hospital room. And, you know, I think they're okay, and then it finds out that it's him, and he's taking care of them. Well, he heals them back to health, and he tells them he's going to let them go. He's going to turn them into the police himself, and he's going to, they'll get probably $700 million, 700 million yen, which is like $7 million, for, you know, injury charges and so on and so forth. But then, they're going to sleep, and they wake up, and they're back in the torture room. So it all starts over again. This time, the 
people forgets to it gets it, it doesn't it's so much torture anymore. It's just he can I guess kill them. So he takes the guy and you know he tells him that he's going he'll let the girl go if he can make it over to her. But what he's going to do is cut out his rectal lining through his anus. And at this point, I thought he he was going to cut his anus open and pull out his intestines through his anus. No, he's not going to do that. He instead takes the scalpel, cuts the stomach open, reaches down inside the guy. He's fishing around in there, you know, really walking around, trying to find this. He grabs the guy's rectal lining, pulls it out through the hole he made, and pulls a lot of it out. So he's got all this intestinal gut stuff, and he takes and cuts it, hooks around a meat hook, and then tells the guy to walk to the girl across the room. And if he can make it over there and grab the pair of scissors laying on the floor, cut her uh, straps on her wrist and ankles off, then she'll go free. And he'll go out, but she'll go free. Well, <clears throat> um, he makes a halfway fall, busts his nose and all this. He gets up because he's got this amazing strength. The guy's getting so excited, the doctor person. And then the guy reaches the scissors, he cuts off her, you know, the, the, the straps around her ankles. It's some kind of, it's the Japanese bondage, I can't remember what it's called, but the rope, the Japanese bondage. What it looks like. Yeah, show my heart, that's what it's called. And he takes and cuts the, these perfectly little knots off. He, he's heading up toward the guy's getting excited all the same still. He's going to cut her wrist straps loose. And as he's doing it, he cuts through and then he realizes inside the string is a piece of thin wire. He can't make scissors. But the guy's like, You can do it, you can cut through the wire, and he dies. So, yeah, that's, that's when. He gets, he dies, and that's, the guy's disappointed in him, says he could have done better. Well, after all this, the girl is, like, saying it, and she starts laughing, and he asks her what she's laughing about, and she tells him this long, elaborate thing of how his mother was a whore, and how he's talking, he has this hereditary genetic thing, and he doesn't know what she's talking about. It turns out what he's, she's talking about is he stinks, but he can't smell himself because he has no sense of smell. And apparently this upsets him so greatly because he didn't know he didn't realize it's not because he can smell. He takes a chainsaw and he rams into her stomach and guts are basically, you know, intestines and stuff fall out. These little, little liver looking things. And after this, he takes an axe, like a small hatchet axe thing. He puts it up to her throat, he a couple of practice swings, and then he lops her head off. And it's flying through the air. And it starts on its way down, and when it starts on its way down, her mouth opens, and it latches onto the doctor's neck and takes a good chunk out of it. At the same time, our hero, who we thought was dead, reaches up from his last dying movement with the pair of scissors he cut the girl's bondage with and cuts the guy's ankle. So, you have him with a giant chunk choking up his neck, his Achilles tendon cut. The man is now fully dead, bleeding, he's bullied to death, and the woman's head is laying there, her eyes closed, and she out. The next scene, you think everyone's dead, right? That was, yeah. Alright, the next scene is, you know, they wake up, or they don't know, so they don't wake up. They shows the doctor, and he's got this toast, these two pieces of wood with their bloody, um, you know, like a cloth or something wrapped around it. And he's got a piece of wire, the piece of wire run between the two string, or between the two posts with a pair of scissors hanging in the middle. I guess it's sort of a sediment to say, you know, they were, you know, the ones who almost got him or whatever. And then you realize he's got, like, probably 30 or 40 posts lined up, and these two are off to the side, and they're their own special thing. The film ends with him holding the hammer. He hit them both with the beginning and kidnapped them. Him sitting there, and a woman walking by, him smiling, spraying his armpits to make sure he doesn't stink, and then getting in the van, and then goes off. So there really wasn't much of a plot, it's just intensely gory and gruesome. It is by all means that it's definitely worth checking out. The acting in this movie is fairly good. The gore is realistic, it's very well done. Um, everything about this movie is good, I thought. Um, if you're a gore hound. Uh, there's a couple scenes of, um, not rape, but like molesting. He fingers the girl in one scene, and he jacks the guy off in one scene. So there's a little bit of the whole... Film type escapade going on in there, but 
far as I want to watch, it's a really boring movie with lots of blood violence. It's a good movie, it's definitely worth checking out. And uh, once again, the film is called Chris. Uh, check it out if you get a chance. Um, and yeah, so until next time, guys, take it easy.